All right, I think we are about ready to begin. Uh, I want to say good morning and good afternoon to everyone on the East Coast. Uh, we have another great turnout. Thank you to everyone who is attending. Um, yeah, so another great turnout to our latest installment in the Nimble Lecture Series, Plotting Your Path to S4 HANA Enterprise Management. I'm Jake Eisbart, part of the Nimble Marketing Team, and we're going to let you know a little bit about Nimble. We are SAP technologists. Overview a little bit of our company. Uh, our consulting business, which is 50% of our work, delivers SAP projects both technical and functional, while our Denver-based SAP managed services, the other 50%, supports both Fortune 1000 and Mid-Market 24-7 across 20-plus skill sets. Uh, while our projects tend to be technical in nature, uh, we're looking at uh, HANA UX uh, Solution Manager, we likewise provide deliverable-based SAP functional business process and PMO services. Uh, here's a quick list of the services that we offer. Obviously, today we will be focusing on S4 HANA, and here's a list of some of the customers uh, that we currently work with. Um, a couple housekeeping items. We want to be able to answer as many questions as possible, so if you'll notice in the bottom left, the chat box, feel free to ask uh, any questions that you'd like, uh, and our presenter, uh, Michael, will be uh, answering those at the end. So uh, let's get to it. Our speaker today is uh, Michael Pytel. In addition to being the CTO and co-founder of Nimble, Michael is a certified SAP NetWeaver, SAP HANA, and SAP Solution Manager resource with over 10 years of technical SAP implementation expertise and over 13 years of overall ERP experience. Uh, he's led countless technical projects, driving business process improvements via documentation and monitoring, IT service, uh, change request management, and Michael is a veteran presenter at SAP Insider, uh, an SAP Press uh, published author, and has presented ASUG at SAP conferences, and is an active member in the SAP ecosystem. So at that point, at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Mike. Mike, go ahead and take it away. Uh, thank you, Jake, for the great introduction. So everybody, thank you for joining today. really wanted to talk today about plotting our path to S4. Uh, S4 means a lot of different things to a lot of different companies, and we all, though, we all understand that we need to get there someday, right? Because all future innovation, all new f capabilities, new functionality is being built into S4. So, you know, it's part of everybody's roadmap. Sort of, we all know we're going to graduate high school and go into college. Same thing here. We all know we, we need to graduate into S4. It's just a matter of if and when and, and what version and how we get there, because there are multiple paths. Uh, so to so to start today, we're going to talk about, you know, just upgrade drivers, just setting the stage, talking about why do people upgrade, when do people upgrade, and what are some of the pains that we have when we upgrade. And then I'm going to talk about upgrade paths. So as I said before, we know that S4 Enterprise Management is our end goal, and it is the, table, it is the simplification of, of many business processes across all modules of, of SAP ERP, and it's the next evolution of the business suite. But we have multiple paths to get there, and certain paths have different risks and benefits, and not all paths are going to be the same for every customer. I think this is one benefit of being an SAP customer is that we have the ability uh, to choose. We have the ability to make a choice. Uh, so choice is good. So I think everybody agrees there. I'll talk about building the business case for S4 HANA as well. You know, again, there is no written book on uh, this, is the, this is the business case for S4 HANA that's the same for every company. Everybody is different, every journey is different, and every business case will be different as well. And then I'll wrap it up uh, with some, uh, with some thoughts and, and questions. So I want to talk first about what are we going to cover in depth. So learning about the migration path from business suite on any database to either business suite on HANA or S4 Financials or S4 Enterprise. Right? Again, I mentioned there's multiple steps. We're going to talk about what those steps are. I'm also going to talk about the value drivers and the technical innovation with business suite on SAP HANA. Now, everybody knows on the phone, if you've heard me speak before, I do bleed blue. Uh, but one thing I think everybody can admit is that SAP HANA is an innovative platform. It is an innovative database. It is more than just marketing slides and material at Sapphire. SAP HANA is tremendously powerful. Uh, and trying to explain what HANA can do is trying to explain what is the art of possible. Uh, because it can do so much, and it is a, it is a wonderful platform to build upon. So. You know, we started supporting SAP HANA when it was first released, then VW on HANA, then Suite on HANA, or ERP on HANA, and now S4 HANA. So uh, uh, kudos to SAP for, for building the business suite on top of SAP HANA and leveraging its capability it, because it truly is uh, an innovative platform. 
Now, uh, we're going to talk about total cost of ownership with, related to SCP HANA and S4 HANA and explain how in different customer situations their, their TCO has either remained the same or was reduced. We'll talk about these use cases. And I'll talk about the risks and benefits of, of migrating to Sweden HANA or S4 HANA uh, and just some gotchas that we've picked up on, on our project experience. So in terms of why do we upgrade, ultimately, if you think if if we just put S4 aside and we just think about enhancer packages and support package stacks, you know we as SAP customers are paying 22% maintenance per year if we're an enterprise customer and a little bit lower if we're a standard customer, but we're entitled to these upgrades. And so you know, a lot of people calculate SAP the ROI for SAP on the initial implementation, and we all know that you have to calculate ROI on SAP every year. So every year that you pay 22% maintenance to SAP. We need to sit down and say, all right, we're investing this money in SAP. We're not only getting support from SAP, what else are we going to do to maximize our investment in those maintenance dollars? Now, in thinking about maximizing our investment in SAP, we obviously want to focus on improving business processes, optimizing process steps, decreasing the number of screens, decreasing the number of fields people use, and simplifying the business process. Now, thankfully, through enterprise maintenance for the past three years, we've had access to SAP Fiori, and then we've had access now to SAP Screen Personas, which helps us optimize business processes, simplifies the user experience. I have the ability to combine multiple transactions into one, multiple screens into one, and really, you know, optimize the business process, not from the sense of I'm going to be shipping something more quickly. What I'm going to do is make it so that my end users are actually spending less time in the system and more time working, right, doing real work, not just sitting down and entering data into the system. And another reason why a lot of customers upgrade is hardware and software end of life. We can't ignore these things. They're constantly changing in our environment. If you're currently internally hosted, these are things that you're dealing with every day. We have operating systems coming in and out of maintenance. We have hardware in and out of maintenance, etc. These are also drivers of why we upgrade. So why do we avoid upgrades? And, and I'm going to go back to the poll question uh, in a little bit. That it, um, We'll get that there. Why do we avoid upgrades? Number one is we avoid upgrades because of testing. Right? Testing uh, is really the, the long pull in the tent. We all know that the technical teams may say they have some challenges when doing upgrades, but really that's the easy part. Right? Downloading the media, applying the updates, that's the easy part compared to testing. Testing is what consumes the most energy and the most resources. We have to pull people away from the business. We have to um, uh, build test scripts, build a test script repository, that is the most difficult part. It's not op development, it's not basis, it's not security. Testing is one of the main reasons why most of our customers avoid upgrades in the past. The other reason why people avoid upgrades is licensing, right? And that's something I can't uh, help here on this webinar. Uh, licensing challenges, changing the licensing agreements, people that have stopped paying maintenance and want to start paying maintenance, and, and no clear understanding of the value prop of, of why go to S4. So I, I don't know if I'll be able to help solve those licensing questions. What I do, what I hope I am going to highlight is some of the value prop of, of moving to suite on HANA, S4 HANA, and S4 Enterprise Management through this webinar. Now, in terms of goals, our goals for upgrades, whether it's an S4 upgrade, a Sweden on HANA upgrade, or a migration S4 enterprise management, our goals is, are to, to reduce fear through innovation, right? So when we, uh, when we go to the business and we say, hey, we're, we're going to upgrade to XYZ version of uh, this, this component of SAP, a lot of people have fear because they don't know what it is. Well, how is it going to change my job? How is it going to change the supply chain? How is it going to change finance? How is it going to change what we do every day? What's going to be impacted? Our interface is going to be impacted. And the way that you remove this fear is actually, you know, here at Demo we say the demo is king. Uh, much like uh, the SAP CEO kind of stood on stage and said when he was selling vacuums door to door, the demo was king, right? So software demos are king. And, and, and the way you reduce fear in your business about an S4 upgrade or about a suite on HANA migration, is to do a proof of concept, is to do a live demo. Um, we're all going to talk about ways that you can do that in your environment today, very low cost, very easy, and, and begin use, using resources provided by SAP to, to conduct proof of concepts. We're also going to talk about reducing testing effort. Um, again, that's one of the primary reasons why, why companies don't upgrade uh, is because they, they don't know what to test or testing is too expensive. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about how we minimize downtime to the business during our upgrades and migrations. Okay. In terms of driving value from, from maintenance, highlighting a few points here. Number one, 
installing enhancement packages isn't sufficient when we say we need to drive value from our enter enterprise maintenance, right? Because installing an enhancement package and activating enhancement packs are two different steps. Very oftentimes, go into customer environments and they've installed Enhancement Pack 7, but when you really look under the hood and look at what they've activated, they're still running the same version of ERP that was available 12 years ago. And nobody wants to tell the CFO, we're paying 22% maintenance on a 12-year-old car, right? Because that's effectively what you're doing when you choose not to activate enhancements. Now, when looking at S4, either S4 Financials or S4 Enterprise Management, you're going to see me use the words forced business process change, and I think this is a good thing. This is a good thing that SAP is saying, all right, customers, for the past 12 years, we've used the enhancement pack strategy, and, and a majority of you did not activate enhancements. So with S4 Financials, we are now making you change. So we have new capabilities in finance, new capabilities in treasury, new capabilities in credit and cash management. You will need to migrate. You will need to innovate. You will need to adopt some of these innovations. So enhanced pack strategy, I, I don't know if it will exist in the future of S4. Again, I don't work for SAP, and I'm not part of the SAP product management team. But I do like that with S4, we, we are kind of forced to adopt some innovations, and, and we'll talk about what those are. Continuing with my theme of driving value from enterprise maintenance, I don't think enough customers know that Fiori is available for every version of the SAP Business Suite. So if you're running SAP ERP 6, Enhancement Pack 0 to Enhancement Pack 7 or 8, you can use Fiori in your landscape. Now, SAP Fiori and the, and the Fiori applications delivered by SAP uh, do have dependent versions. So the catalog for, if you're non-HANA, the catalog for applications is 100 to 200 applications. Yes, that's not very big. But Fiori, very oftentimes, end up being custom applications. And, and, and you, you as customers have the ability to leverage Fiori on any version of ERP. We also now, with a recent update with SAP Screen Personas, uh, in the past, prior to this month, SAP Screen Personas was only available if you were running ERP 6 and Hatch Pack 7. Well, with SAP Screen Personas 3.0 SP3, if you're running SAP ERP Enhancement Pack 4 or above, you can use SAP Screen Personas. So you can provide a new skin, a new look and feel using SAP Screen Personas on a six-year-old version of SAP ERP. That's a fantastic innovation delivered by SAP as part of our enterprise maintenance that, I, in my opinion, a lot of customers don't know. Some other complementary components that are part of your enterprise maintenance you may not realize, if you already own or, or operate or use uh, suite on HANA, then you have smart business applications. You have HANA Live. And then all SAP customers, regardless of whether or not you're running HANA or not, you have access to Solution Manager 7.2. Now, we all know that Solution Manager 7.1 introduced a lot of innovation and was an ITIL certified tool. It's, it's got 16 different ITIL certifications. It's up there with HEMIT, HEAT, and Remedy, and Track It, and ServiceNow, right? Same number of ITIL certifications. Solution Manager brings to the table, though, is deep integration SAP. And more specifically in Solution Manager 7.2, Solution Manager 7.2 has all of the 2B process maps for S4 HANA. So here on screen I have a poll uh, of asking, did everybody know that S4 HANA process flows are in 7.2? And the reason why this is important is, the reason why this is important is, if you're wondering, hey, what are the, what are the, AP accounts payable processes in S4. What are the accounts receivable processes in S4? How is treasury processes handled in S4? If you, if, if, if you upgrade to Solution Manager 7.2, all of the 2B process maps for S4 HANA Enterprise Management are available in Solution Manager 7.2. So I have the ability to, I, I, I have the ability to look at, before ever installing S4, right, before downloading any of the media, and honestly, before ever licensing S4, because the S4 process flows are available to anybody that has Solution Manager. If we want to know what the delta difference is between our current process and our future process, then we, then we can use S4 HANA process maps in Solution Manager 7.2 to figure out those gaps. This is how I, I, I do credit management today. This is what SAP credit management looks like in the future. Solution Manager 7.2 delivers that capability. Now, I do not know if the S4 business process flows will ever be delivered to Solution Manager 7.1. So in my opinion, one major driver for Solution Manager 7.2 upgrades this year and next will be those customers looking at S4, wanting to know what are the 2B processes going to be so that they use Solution Manager to, to, to get that done. 
perfect. So we got a lot of great responses and a lot of people that didn't know uh, about that. Now I have another poll question here I'd love to get answered. How often do you apply enhancement packages or support packages? This plays along with, with some of the content that we've been talking about already, which is driving value from your enterprise maintenance. And what I wanted to do is just highlight to everybody here on the webinar, uh, what, what are people doing, right? How often are you applying support packages? When they're released, once per year, once every other year, or what's an enhancement pack? Uh, thankfully, no one answered the last one. Uh, I'm sure we'll get one here now that I've said that. But. So enhancement packages and support packages, again, delivered as part of your SAP Enterprise Maintenance. You're entitled to them, and they include optimizations. And I think there's a significant gap in the number of customers out there that are actually adopting and activating those enhancement packages. Moving on. So I talked about how do we reduce fear around upgrades uh, and around this innovation with S4, right? How do we reduce fear? Well, the first thing that we can do, number one, is we can leverage the Cloud Appliance Library. The Cloud Appliance Library is an, is an environment uh, created by SAP that is, leverages both Amazon Cloud and Microsoft Azure to provide cloud-based instances of SAP products, right? And we'll just leave it at that. So it's a very broad environment. And what we can do is we're going to navigate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. And we'll let that uh, load. So if everybody can see my screen, I'm going to go to cal.sap.com. So again, the demo is king. And going to cal.sap.com, what you're going to see is that SAP has lots of canned SAP applications built within sort of virtual environments that you can activate and connect to your, uh, your environment if you so choose. And of course, today it doesn't want to work. We'll see. All right, here we are. So here's the Cloud Appliance Library. And in my instance, I have an ERP6 Enhanced Pack 8 on HANA system in my environment. But let's go ahead and navigate the solutions that are available to us as a customer. And again, these are environments that are cloud-based, right? It's pay-per-use. So for example, if I want to showcase to my business users what does S4 actually look like, right? What is S4? What does the UI look like? How do I transact against that? Right here I have an instance. S4 HANA on-premise 1511 FPS 01 fully activated. Right, I can click on it. I click on the lock. If I if I want to uh, if I want to use this, I click on lock. I, I accept a license terms and agreement, and I'm off and running. Now, in terms of the getting started guide, everything is out here that you need to connect to the instance. It's going to give me the DDIC user ID, the system accounts, uh, all the URLs that I need to use. It gives me all the operating system user IDs and passwords. Essentially, this is my very own private pl playground. I don't need to be licensed for S4 in order to use the Cloud Appliance Library. Today, if you're just investigating, you just want to know what is S4? What does it look like? What does it feel like? How do I process a document? How do I process a shipment? You can use the Cloud Appliance Library as your playground. While I'm here, though, I also want to talk about how there's SAP BW on HANA out, out here as well, SAP Mobile Platform, SAP Business Objects. Um, you can see here as I'm scrolling through, Lots of different SAP components are available to us as SAP customers, and essentially we're using our own Amazon accounts or at Microsoft Azure accounts to pay per, pay per hour, essentially. Right? So here at Nimble, we use the S4 fully activated HANA system uh, as, as our sort of our playground. Uh, and and if, as long as we're smart about stopping and starting it at the end and the beginning of each day, it costs us around $400 a month. So for a very low cost of investment, we have access to a full, fully, fully built S4 solution that we can then connect to our own environment. We can use uh, tools to load data like uh, data services or LSMWs. We can use these environments. So very easy to use, lots of solutions out there. So if you're wondering, again, about BW74 on HANA, if you're wondering about business objects on HANA, uh, business objects with HANA, if you're wondering about S4, the Cloud Appliance Library is the best place for you to prototype these solutions and fly under the radar. When you activate an instance on the Cloud Appliance Library, uh, your account executive is not alerted. You don't need to be fearful that you're going to get a phone call and, and people are going to now start bothering you about buying S4. Very nice place for you to run under the radar. Now, another great tool for, for customers is the Innovation Discovery app. 
this is an area of the service marketplace that we can investigate what are the innovations that are available to me today and what are the innovations available to me if I move to S4 HANA, right? Because quite honestly, investigating the S4 HANA simplification list, which is roughly 300 pages, is too burdensome. It's too cumbersome. If I don't want to know what I'm looking for, I'm not going to find it in that document. So today, if you have a solution manager system and you are using and you have early watch reports active, your solution manager system is sharing information with SAP Service Marketplace, right, the support portal. It's telling SAP what do you have installed and what's being used and what's your support package level and what are the notes that are deployed and what, what database are you running on and, and all the different versions of your SAP and landscape. Now, within the Innovation Discovery Center, I have the ability to very narrowly focus and drill down to different innovations that are available to me. And I can filter down to say, show me only innovations that are included in what I currently own. So if you're running Enhanced Pack 7 on Oracle or Enhanced Pack 7 on DB2, show me the innovations that are available to me as part of Enhanced Packages. Now, if you wanted to, you could change the filter to say, what if I move to S4, what innovations would be available to me? Wonderful resource for finding and investigating. Uh, it has search capability, and more importantly, it has export to Excel capability, so that once you narrowly define a list of 20 to 30 enhancements in S4 that you like, you can get those out to Excel and then begin sharing those out with other folks and, and, and create some interaction between you and your business users as to what's available, what's best used for me. Right? Now, another... Uh, Another uh, great tool that we have available to us to understand what innovation is available to me is the Business Scenario Recommendations Report. Now, the Business Scenario Recommendations Report essentially takes, again, that data that we have in our ERP system, uh, data in a transaction called STO3N about what people use and when they use uh, uh, the different transaction codes in our environment, and pairs that with a knowledge base at SAP about, you know, if I'm using FAGLO3N, uh, what Fiori transaction might benefit me in S4? If I'm using MDO4 for MRP in ERP, what uh, Fiori transactions in S4 would benefit my MRP or planners or buyers in S4? Right, so it takes your current system data and pairs that with S4 uh, capabilities and gives you a nice report as to if I went to S4, what are some of the enhancements that I might be able that are, are best uh, applicable to my company? Right. So here I have a BSR report, a business area recommendations report. And, and again, what, is, what I'm showing you here is just in a high-level overview uh, where I shared some data with SAP about my usage of ERP, and they came back and gave me this report. So in basic warehouse management, theoretically, 100% of, what what, uh, uh, of warehouse management new capabilities in S4 apply to me. So what are the T codes that I use? that are simplified in S4, right? This report contains all of these. So theoretically, right? Again, this is a, there is no easy button in life, but uh, for analyzing and investigating an S4 migration, and we need to have a starting place of, to explain to our business users what's going to change, how is it going to change, the business scenario recommendations is that starting point. So within manufacturing, I have seven business scenarios that are optimized or improved by moving to S4. That could be through table simplifications, screen simplifications, or business process simplifications. And again, in MRP, I want to decrease inventory and safety stocks, right? WIP, work in progress. Every controller in the industry, in the if, uh, a controller for any manufacturing company, will tell you they would love the, to reduce WIP because work in progress is cash uh, that is on the shelf and not in my hand. Now, in terms of the value prop, again, it's going to talk through what are some of the innovations of S4 HANA specific for manufacturing that are applicable to me based on how my users use the system. Now, you might be wondering, well, how do I do this? How do I get this data? So what you're going to want to do is you're going to open a browser, and you're going to just simply want to go to s4hana.com. s4hana.com uh, looks like SAP has an expired certificate. Uh, s4hana.com basically has the ability to what we say register, and it goes through, and what we do is we upload a file. Now, the instructions for creating this file are also on the website. Essentially, you fill in information about yourself, your system ID, your installation number, your customer number, and you upload the file as requested. Now, the file that's being requested is just a, a text file containing all the transaction codes and programs your users use in your production system. 
So every SAP ERP system out of the box is cataloging every T code that users use. Now, by default, it's keeping 90 days worth of data. So out of the box, ERP says, for the past 90 days, I know who ran every T code in every program. Now, your basis team members may have shrunk this to 30 days or 60 days. You can get this data, though, very easily. You can share it with SAP, and within five business days, you get the business scenario recommendations report uh, that I talked that I, that I showed briefly. So this this business scenario recommendations report, it is meant to again support that business case development, right? So help me identify what opportunities are there for me, specific to my organization, to leverage S4 HANA. Now, when talking about an S4 migration, I want to highlight or clarify that there are two versions of S4 HANA available to customers today, two primary versions. Now the first version that I wanted to talk about is S4 HANA Finance. So S4 HANA Finance is an installable component that sits on top of either ERP6 Enhanced Pack 7 or ERP6 Enhanced Pack 8. S4 Finance has a different release path than S4 Enterprise Management. So some of you may have questions here, and I would love for you to use the chat window to ask those. I can migrate from any version of ERP on any database directly to S4 Finance 16.05 on ERP with Enhanced Pack 8. Okay? S4 Finance is an ABAP add-on to Enhanced Pack 8. That's the way it is today. Right? So this, this may be seem confusing. S4 Finance is just the simplification of finance. It is not the simplification of logistics, of supply chain, of plant maintenance, of project systems, of all those other modules. It is just the simplification of APAR, CO, Treasury, uh, FSCM. Right? It's just the simplification of finance. When you, if you're considering a move to S4 HANA Enterprise Management, you are then on a path of forced business process change for every ERP business process in your landscape. When you move to S4 HANA Finance, you are just biting off or tackling that, that simplification in finance, but we're leaving order to cash alone. We're leaving pl uh, plan, plan to procure or make the stock. We're leaving all those scenarios as is. Supply chain is, is not impacted. When I move to S4 HANA Finance, I get all the innovation of S4 Finance, and I don't touch my supply chain or my all the other modules. If you're considering a direct my upgrade and migration from any version of ERP on any database directly to S4 Enterprise Management, S4 Enterprise Management is the latest and greatest release of the business suite, and it includes technical innovation across all modules except uh, HR, and it is forced business process change for everybody. So if we sit back and think about this, if you're not running on HANA today, we need to upgrade and migrate to HANA to get to S4. Whether S4 Finance or S4 Enterprise Management, you're going to have to get to business suite on HANA. So there's that amount of change that you're introducing, which is, which is candidly, it's not that much. Uh, you're really checking whether or not your ABAP code runs on HANA. It, you are, uh, your, your business processes are, are kind of as is. But when introducing S4 Finance, you are changing the way finance does work. You're going to be changing roles. You're going to be changing security. You're going to be updating end user training material. That is manageable, in my opinion, manageable from a finance perspective. When moving to S4 Enterprise Management, that is a sizable project. You're changing the way every user in your business is going to interact with ERP. You're changing security roles. You're changing uh, end user training material, changing business processes. You're changing all of your custom ABAP code. S4 Enterprise Management, again, for those customers that are on this call here, you're more than likely install base, and you're more than likely a, a customer that's fully deployed all of SAP ERP. Uh, that is a lot of change to, to migrate to in, in one step. So for us, uh, for Nimble and most of its customers, a very common roadmap looks like this. On the top half, we have the SAP Business Suite on your database today. And on the bottom, we have SAP Business Suite on HANA and then S4 Finance kind of down the road, right? And then S4 six, uh, Enterprise Management even farther down the road. This is a very common uh, high value, low risk type roadmap in, in our opinion. Now, let's talk about the top half of the roadmap, my, my little subway map. And, and I got this, uh, this idea while sitting on a MARTA train in Atlanta uh, looking at their subway map. I, I, that's where the idea for this roadmap came from. 
uh, up top we have inventory business processes, inventory identifying your technical prerequisites. We're using Solution Manager in this in, in this area. Solution Manager has the ability to inventory everything your users do in production and catalog that in Solution Manager. Ideally, we're using Solution Manager 7.2 for this. We're inventorying your integration scenarios and re we're reducing all your technical tables. We're purging IDOC tables, workflow history tables, etc. We're doing all that pre-work. While that's going on, ideally what you're doing is you're doing an S4 HANA finance POC in the cloud with your with some of your data. Right? You're you're spinning up an Amazon instance, you're spinning up in a Microsoft Azure instance, you're using S4 in the cloud to prototype and essentially do a UI roadshow with your business users saying this is how Treasury works in the future. This is how finance works. This is how uh, S4 Finance is going to work. Or if you're the, a customer that's moving to S4 Enterprise Management, this is how S4 Enterprise Management works in the future. Procure your licenses. Then ideally we're doing a one-step migration to Business Suite on HANA. Uh, this could in, th when I say one-step migration to Business Suite on HANA, this includes the installation of S4 Finance, but not necessarily the activation. We do a weekend call over, minimal impact. And then we go down the path of S4 Finance activation, which just talking about S4 Finance activation is a project in itself. When you, when you go live with S4 Finance, you can only go live essentially 11, at 11 points in the year because the S4 Finance conversion cutover has to correlate with your financial calendar. Right? The period has to be technically closed in SAP. Material ledger has to be closed in SAP in order to activate SAP Finance. So when you think about moving to Suite on HANA, we can kind of move to Suite on HANA any weekend of the year, except for month-end close, right? So there's at least uh, you know 26 weekends a year where we can move to uh, Business Suite on HANA with no impact. Uh, now, when talking about S4 Finance or S4 Enterprise Management, that move has to correlate with your financial calendar. You wouldn't do it on your year end, right? That would might be too much risk. So you really, there's only 11, 11 weekends in the year that you can move to S4 Finance. So uh, those, those are all things that you need to take into consideration. For, for us, this has been a common roadmap. Um, with the most recent release of S4 HANA Finance, uh, 1605, a lot of our customers are doing both the S4 Finance installation and activation and migration to HANA in one weekend because it is technically feasible. We're going to talk about uh, some of those key points and gotchas. Now, in talking through that, a lot of you may or may not uh, know that S4 Finance was different than S4 HANA Enterprise Management. But for those of you that do, we do have a survey question out here. With what S4 component is on your 12 to 24 month roadmap? Is it finance only, finance then enterprise management, or suite on HANA and maybe S4? So we have a majority of people answering no plans, and that's great because that means people are attending this webinar to get information, right? How do, how do I get there? What tools can I use to get there? Uh, that's great that we're getting those responses out there. So very good to see that. Uh, less, actually, less, only 5% uh, or a combined 28% are saying S4 financials first and then uh, S4 HANA enterprise management later. Very cool. Now. One question we get a lot is, is there value in moving to Suite on HANA, right? Is there only value in going to S4? In, in our opinion, there is value in moving to Suite on HANA. It is not for naught. It is not a step that is required and, not, and adds no value at all. Uh, with Suite on HANA, I get major enhancements in runtime for finance transactions. I get H, H versions of my transactions, so we all know FBL 3N, FAGL 3N. Uh, those were introduced with uh, with the business suite. Uh, now there's H versions of those transactions, which leverage the HANA database. Uh, and, and I know ever, there's a lots of accountants out there that would love to be able to run FBL 3H uh, wide open, right? For the whole period, show me all postings. Uh, because accountants don't do that today because, quite honestly, on any other database, the transactions are timing out. Within logistics, we have a new capability called MRP Live. It's just what it sounds like. It's taking MRP from a batch process to an interactive process. Wonderful improvements there. And also improvements in runtime in the procurement transactions. From a technical side, when moving to Suite on HANA, I get Fiori and Personas 3.0. Uh, I get uh, 1,000 plus Fiori applications for ERP. I get HANA Live, and I get opportunities for ABAP optimization. Wonderful enhancements with Suite on HANA. So there, for those of you that are joining the call and thought, I only get innovation if I go to S4. That is absolutely not true. There is tangible value with uh, Suite on HANA. 
So that begs the question, Suite on HANA or S4 HANA? And then the next question will be, which version of S4 HANA? So with the, with the business suite on HANA, there is no forced business process change. You can move the ERP business suite on HANA. You can execute all of your business processes as is. No security rule changes, no front end changes. You can move there safely, and everything will run as is, but a little bit faster. Now there are lots of there are there are some ERP innovations with suite on HANA. I highlighted three, but it's not going to be anywhere in the catalog that's presented with S4. Now with S4, as I talked about before, we have forced business process change. And I, and I use those words uh, carefully uh, because it is forced. Treasury management transactions are in Fiori solely in S4-1605. That is a forced business process change. I can no longer use the SAP GUI transactions. There is a new user experience. There's a new analytic capabilities. And there's a, honestly, S4 is the prerequisite for all future innovation. Uh, so when In thinking about SAP Fiori and Personas and the new UI, I wanted to pull the audience just to understand, do you have any Fiori or Personas apps deployed today? And the reason why this is, uh, is important is when you build the business case for, for S4, the user experience, in, in my opinion, or in our opinion, is one of the pillars of that business case. And we're going to talk about that more in a couple slides. So we have a good mix here, a great spread. Some people have deployed it. Some people uh, uh, have it. Some people don't know what they can do. So th that's good education, though, out there for me, and so I can uh, continue to focus some of my, my topics. So when, when talking about moving to S4, you do have to choose, decide what version of S4 am I going to. Right? So S4 HANA Finance, its current release is titled 1605, being released in May 2016. S4 HANA Finance is an ABAP add-on for ERP-6 EHP-8 on HANA. So S4 HANA Finance is only available on HANA. So you must be migrated to suite on HANA. You, you install S4 HANA Finance, and then you activate it. So initially, there is no forced business process change. You activate when ready. Uh, the latest release was, again, uh, May of 2016. You may know this by its former name, which was called S4 HANA Finance 1503. And prior to that, it was called Simple Finance. So the name Simple Finance has been retired. Uh, you do see references to Simple Finance 3.0 in some of the documentation. But ultimately, S4 HANA Finance 16.05 is the current release of finance. Now, you have SAP S4 HANA 1511 Enterprise Management, which was released in November 2015. It is more than just simplifications of finance. It's table simplifications for all of logistics. It's forced business process change. And two examples of that forced business process change are here. Number one, I must convert all customers and vendors to business partners. For those of you that know the transaction BP, essentially in S4 Enterprise Management, there is no customer master. There is no vendor master. There is one. There is business partners. Right? You have a forced conversion to that. That's forced business process change. Your customer service agents will need to be retrained on how to use the BP transaction instead of the uh, customer master transactions. I've listed two bullet points out of a, out of a hundreds uh, that are that are there. That doesn't mean that they're bad. What it means, though, is that I, I have an effort to test those changes, to regression test those changes, to figure out do my business processes fit with those innovations, and I and I now have to go through and, and, and go and retrain my workforce on how to use these simplifications. So S4 HANA Finance is finance impacts only. It's part of ERP six and Hansel Gate on HANA and no forced business process change, activate when ready. Enterprise management is forced process change. And not to confuse everybody even more, but the, but the finance innovations delivered in 1605 are not part of 1511. So S4 HANA Finance 1605 is, is, in SAP's words, the first S4 HANA release where a finance team member can work exclusively in Fiori. Right? So the the S4 HANA Finance 1605 has a fully developed Fiori catalog for the finance team members so that they're not bouncing between the Fiori UI and the SAP GUI transactions. Whereas S4 HANA 1511 doesn't have all of the new 1605 innovations for finance. There is an upcoming release of S4 HANA titled 1610, released in October of this year, that will finally have all of those finance innovations. Some of you might be thinking, well, what about S4 HANA Cloud? 
Now, S400 Cloud would be a whole webinar in itself that we don't really have time to cover today, but I don't want to leave those people in the dark. SAP does have a migration tool to help you migrate from e ERP on any database to S4 HANA Cloud. It is essentially the SAP Landscape Transformation and Data, data Migration Server. Uh, some of you know this is TDMS. Some of you know this is SLT. Uh, essentially, that's all kind of the same software. There's multiple cloud offerings from SAP, and I do have a link to a document that kind of talks about that migration. Now, release planning. Um, I'm going to skip a couple of these slides because I want to get to the business case. Long story short, when moving to S4 HANA, you, you, you still have support packages to, to account for, and you must also account for HANA revisions. Uh, there is a, a HANA revision strategy out there called the Data Center Service Point, and essentially what that says is this is the version of HANA that SAP recommends for production use. When you or your partners or your data center buys a HANA appliance, you're more than likely your HANA vendor will always install the most recent version of HANA. And that not necessarily is the one that SAP supports in production. So I do have links here to documents and notes for you to check out so you can read more about that. Again, it, earlier in the presentation, I, f I, I hinted to building the business case for HANA being different for everybody. And that is true. Now, I do have some primary drivers, though, for, that S4, for the S4 business case. I, I, bro I, I kind of categorize those into four areas, user experience, analytics, process improvements, and IT cost reductions. In our experience, the drivers for S4 can be kind of categorized in one of these four areas. So the first one, user experience. Number one, it's redefined, right? It's, it's the fewer user face is more pleasant and the screen flow is, is, is better. What does that mean to the business? What it means is reduced effort with resource turnover, right? When, we, when a resource leaves and we have to train somebody how to use MMO2, maternal ma maintenance, that is a very confusing transaction. I, don't, I think there must be 25 plus tabs in that transaction, and, and essentially our training is on what not to click instead of what to click, because a lot of these SAP GUI transactions are made for multiple people. The MMO2 transaction could have a finance person in it, could have a planner in it, could have someone on the shop floor in that transaction. Uh, whereas Fiori, every transaction is kind of built to a job function. And so there's decreased training for, for, new, for end users or new users when using Fiori. Less, try, less time spending on transaction means more time doing actual work. Talked about that before. Uh, mobilized transactions, a lot of these Fiori transactions are, are mobile enabled. And another great capability that I think is often underrated is enterprise search. Imagine in Fiori with S4, you could Google your entire ERP system. So you have a, a, a sub-vendor, Acme Corp, and you want to know everything related to Acme Corp. Every, tr every PO, every return, every dispute, every invoice, everything related to Acme Corp. You can use enterprise search to search any field anywhere. Right? That's a redefined user experience. Can you narrowly define a hard dollar savings here? I think that would be pretty tough. I think soft dollar savings are a lot of the savings that we attribute to the user experience. Now, what if you're an IT department that doesn't know the pains that your users have, or your users don't tell you that transactions are slow or painful or hinder them from doing real work. Um, SAP does have a, a third-party product out there that is called User Experience Management by a company named NOAA. NOAA is partly owned by SAP, uh, and they actually make a wonderful product. Now, for those of you viewing this on your desktop or your laptop, it might be an eye chart, but please do zoom in here. So. If you, as an IT person or, or a business analyst, maybe your business doesn't come to you and say uh, procurement transactions stink, or they're not telling you that, that, that shop floor transactions are slowing them down, and you want to find out really what are users doing and where are they, where are they working slow. NOAA can do that. User experience management, or what I like, I like to call it end user analytics can do, is investigate and interrogate. Uh, and on screen here, on the top of the graph, I have unique users. How many transactions are used and how many unique users use those transactions? How many unique screens are within those transactions? How much time is spent in those transactions? And over my time period, what are the total number of errors in those transactions? And the top graph alone speaks for itself. Everybody in this webinar can pick out what transaction causes our end users the most pain, right? ME22N. We spend 232 hours a month in, and we average 4,900 errors a month in that transaction. Now, we all know that didn't result in 4,900 phone calls to the help desk. What that shows us is 
the end users are struggling in the transaction. Now we can interrogate those errors. What were they getting? Was it bad material number, bad part number, bad vendor, bad et cetera, et cetera. We can interrogate those. But this is a candidate for Yuri. This is a candidate for simplification. This is a candidate for SAP screen personas. End user analytics supports the IT department or the group business analysts that doesn't know what innovation to offer the business. Right? If your business users are not coming to you telling you what they need or what they want or where they have slowdowns, NOAA can help fill that gap. This is a pay product. I should highlight that. And I don't usually advertise pay products. Uh, but it is one that I think or I feel supports the business case development for S4. Now, in terms of analytics, analytics is a huge part of the business case for S4 HANA, as whether it's S4 Financials or S4 Enterprise Management. Today, up top, let's look, talk about BW. What do I got to do to build a cash flow statement? Or what do I got to do to build uh, a vendor analysis report, right? I have to define or activate extractors. I have to build a PSA. I have to build a DSO. I have to build an aggregate, an info provider, and then build a BEX query. And then when I go to the controller and the controller says, hey, you missed a column in that report, what do I got to do? I got to go back and change my extract, change my PSA, change my DSO, change my aggregate info provider. Everybody wonders why it takes a BW developer three days to produce a report. The reason why is what SAP labels their, uh, labels, calls their layered scalable architecture, the LSA. It's tremendously flexible and it can do a lot, but it also creates a lot of busy work when we need to produce reports. With Suite on HANA, or with S4 HANA, you can have your data and front-end reporting tools, right? There are instances where BW still is required, where we need to blend SAP and non-SAP data, where we need to manipulate data, yes. But operational reporting is, is vastly improved when moving to, to Sweet on HANA or S4 HANA. And the way that we can calculate some of those savings, which in my opinion are hard dollar savings, is the decrease in effort per year times hourly and late reports per year. If I can do, a, if I can do, a, if, if a BW report prototype takes me 24 hours, and a, and a, and a report a report prototype using Lumira against S4 HANA takes me three hours, I can quantify those savings. I can also quantify the savings in object maintenance. Right? For every BW report, I have a minimum of four objects supporting that report. If I can decrease the middleman, right, to decrease those objects, I have a hard dollar savings per year. Now, when talking about HANA Live, I couldn't talk about S4 HANA without talking about this. Um, some of the terminology is changing here. You may be hearing SAP talking about ABAP CDS views. Uh, essentially, it's all one and the same, where ABAP CDS is, is the latest and greatest, uh, it's, and it has a, a better security model. But for illustration purposes, just wanting to show that SAP number one has predefined 850 HANA views for the business suite. Uh, that, that, are, are, uh, that are installable and usable day one. So as soon as you move to S4 HANA and, you, and your basis team installs HANA Live, this content is available to you out of the box, right? Ready to use, connect to Lumira. Uh, I make it sound easy. There are some security model things that you need to do, things like that. But essentially, much like BW content is available to BW customers, we have HANA Live content available to us as well. So in terms of an analytics case study, had a customer that was using BW for operational reporting, which we all know is not the best habit. And unfortunately for them, they were replicating roughly 10,000 tables uh, to BW for reporting. Uh, this customer had 500 concurrent users in BW. Honestly, the most number of the most concurrent users I've ever seen in a BW environment. Absolutely massive. Uh, and for them, it was maintenance intensive, right? Think about all those process chains and background jobs that you have to monitor to make sure those tables are updated so people can run their BEX queries. The solution, upgrade to Suite on HANA. Now, for them, the analytics business case really supported a Suite on HANA move, not an S4 move. For them, they weren't they, they didn't need table simplifications. They just needed simplifications to getting access to data. And so moving to Suite on HANA enabled them to stop the replication of data uh, and transition from the BEX tools to WebE and Analysis for Office and Lumira. The soft savings was obviously on the user experience side, hard savings on resource time and storage. Now for business process improvement, another one of my pillars for S4 HANA. Wonderful scenarios there where we have better access to data. S4 HANA creates transparency into the data in our ERP system, right? It's all about transparency. I use that word a lot when talking about S4. Uh, we want to develop metrics and KPIs to monitor marketing campaign effectiveness, new product launches, inventory reductions, optimization of inventory, hold ourselves accountable for contracts. Uh, we have a customer that uh, has signed contracts to deliver product to 
its customers. And if they don't meet certain on-time delivery, uh, they get dinged or the value of the contract goes down. And so they obviously want to monitor very closely their performance around deliveries. Well, we can do that with real-time analytics. In the past, they had to do an extract to BW, <coughs> an extract to BW, and they were always looking one day behind. In this, in today's world, with with S4 HANA, they're now able to look at the, their their performance real time against ERP directly and avoid the whole PW layer. So, wonderful innovations there. An example uh, of 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 improvements. No. Oh. I got my my slides are kind of hinked up here. Let's see. There we go. Process improvement case study. Um, manufacturing company wanted a, a they they the problem was is they had a, a clear sales increase. So sales had been increasing year over year for the past two years, and it was increasing. But the the growth of that sales was not linear with on-hand inventory. So their sales were increasing 14% year over year, but their on-hand inventory and their costs were increasing 27%. So why was that growth not linear? Why was on-hand inventory not increasing linear with sales? Right? We're, we're selling more, but we're making, we have less cash because we're spending more in WIP. Solution, Sweet on HANA MRP Live. Better MRP processing, able to uh, adapt to changing requirements more quickly and avoid that, that costly overhead of having too much material built too soon or too much raw material on hand, uh, decreasing WIP. Another process improvement case study, uh, a customer had uh, as a retail environment and they were deploying new product. Uh, they, were, they used subcontract manufacturing and they used 3PL distribution. So in their world, it's very important to be able to efficiently send triggers to manufacturing because once I send a trigger to that manufacturing, that subcontractor to make something, I'm sort of locked into a contract for whatever they're making. And then I have a 3PL of providers that are integrated directly, and that product is now being sh sitting in warehouses where I'm then being charged again. If that product's not selling, it's sitting inside that 3PL provider. So here again, transparency into the data. When we moved a new product to the store, being able to report on, you know, what was the, the adoption of that new product? Were people buying it? And if people are buying it, sending the correct triggers down to those manufacturers and 3PL providers, letting them know we're building more, we're selling more in these different areas. And then lastly, the IT cost reduction side. Um, there is a, a myth in the industry that HANA is going to in increase my IT administration costs. And, and the truth remains, HANA is a database just like any other database. And while your IT administrators will need to be trained on this new database, it is a one-for-one -one swap, right? Administrating Oracle to administrating HANA is relatively the same cost, same number of people. Uh, we're, 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 we're doing a right-click instead of a PL SQL statement, etc. HANA administration is dollar for dollar the same as uh, doing administration for any other system out there. And uh, in a lot of times, my last bullet point here, it displaces archiving projects. So, for example, uh, we have customers that are you know, 10, 12, 15, 20 terabytes, and they're really focused on archiving. Those are expensive projects, right? These are projects that are uh, uh, you know, half a million dollars or more to, to successfully execute. Moving to Suite on HANA kind of kicks that can down the road. We take advantage of HANA's database compression, uh, and we focus less on uh, archiving, and we focus more on process optimization. Uh, obviously, archiving is important. We should do it. We should have a clean environment. We should have clean data. But HANA does allow us to kick that can down the road. Now, in terms of risks, Suite on HANA is very similar to an Enhancer Pack project. Um, uh, it... Uh, uh, it's very similar to doing a support package stack install enhancer pack project. Um, you are, again, activations, enhancements are installed dormant. You're not activating them. Whereas with S4 HANA, you have a new user interface. You have forced business process change. Uh, with S4 Finance specific, there is no impact on supply chain or operations. It's really just the finance area that's, that's there. Uh, and there will be an impact on uh, security and user training and then custom development. If you have a user exit in a SAP GUI transaction, that's not going to migrate to Fiori automatically. We need to rethink what that user exit did and then adapt and modify our Fiori transactions. Interfaces and programs could potentially be impacted by table simplifications that happen as part of S4 enterprise management. Now, I do have a, a couple more slides. I'm going to leave the common miss slides up, and I'm going to tackle some of these questions. Um, So the first one is from David. Is it your recommendation to go to S4 Finance first before going full enterprise suite? 
Now, recently I did have a good uh, a good a good case study, a good uh, a good customer reference for why go to S4 Enterprise Management first. So for certain customers, S4 Enterprise Management is an opportunity to force the business to change. So we have a customer that's been running SAP since 1997, and they feel like IT feels like they've just been doing more of the same, and so their business case for S4 Enterprise Management is forced innovation, forced business process change. Now, from a risk perspective, it is lower risk to move to S4 Finance 1605 first and then install S4 Enterprise Management later down the line as that product matures. Remember, everybody, the first release of S4 Enterprise Management was last November. We're only in July, right? Major innovation, the brand new business suite uh, has only been released since November. Does it make sense to move there today? I'm not sure. If you look at S4 Financials, S4 Financials is the grandson of a simple finance, which has been available for three years now. So that product is pretty well baked. Granted, SCP is introducing a series of new Fury applications this May, but S4 Enterprise S4 Finance is essentially in its third generation. Right? S4 Finance 1605 has been around for three generations now. Now, Rajan says, we are waiting for S4 HANA 1605 release. S4 HANA 1605 is available, but Enterprise 1605 is not out yet. Can we do both together, move to S4 1605 and Enterprise Management 1605 later? What is recommended? Uh, the answer is no, you cannot. Uh, there is no activation process for Enterprise Management. When you upgrade and migrate to S4 Enterprise Management, your tables are simplified. Your tables are converted during the upgrade process. With S4 Finance 1605, it is installed and then activated much like an enhancement pack. So you can move to S4 HANA Finance now, today, and then when S4 1605, 1610, whatever S4 Enterprise Management releases la release later, you then upgrade to it later. And I do have a slightly confusing slide that I will show, but it does show this path very not so clearly, I guess. Uh, here, essentially, I have in red what I'm recommending, right? S4 HANA Finance, on-premise 1605. I can then later upgrade to S4 Finance, Enterprise Management 1610, when I'm ready. All right, so that is sort of the oh, – I apologize. I'm not showing my screen. Let me share it real quick so everybody sees it. So this is a, uh, a graphic talking about S4 and where we can migrate and what we can't migrate to. Uh, S4 Finance uh, is, uh, to me, is a, is a go-to release today. S4 Enterprise Management, again, too much risk, too many changes. Uh, and in and, and, and today's, in today's world, the business is demanding that we be more agile. A an S4 project in itself for finance is a, is a three- to six-month project. S4 Enterprise Management transformation, I haven't been part of a project yet to do enterprise management. I'm excited to, and, and I'm, I don't know if you could tackle that project uh, in three months like we can an S4 1605 project. Okay. So going back to, to the, the questions, for direct migration, first we migrate to HANA using DMO and then use SUM. Uh, the answer there, Deepak, is essentially SUM and DMO are synonymous. They're one tool. Software Update Manager with the database migration option is what you use to migrate to either S4 Finance on HANA or S4 Enterprise Management on HANA. Uh, the next question, how much does extensive custom code and current ECC system in impact the suite on HANA migration? How long does suite on HANA typically migration take? Uh, first one, to answer the easy question first, the last question, uh, Nimble is successfully running at Sweet on HANA projects in eight to nine weeks because they are very much like an enhanced pack project. The impact on custom code is minimal. For example, we had the customer running at SAP since uh, 97, right? So they were an R3 customer, then a sweet business suite customer, and then doing Sweet on HANA. Uh, for running SAP for that long, almost 20 years, they had less than 40 ABAP objects that were not HANA compliant. So we use the SAP Code Inspector, or SCI, in order to analyze what ABAP code exists in our ERP system that is not HANA compliant. Those are readily available tools available to anybody. You don't, do not need a license for them. And again, that's called the SAP Code Inspector. Okay. Next one, SAP HANA infrastructure is expensive. Do you have any, any recommendations to consolidate non-prone systems onto one HANA platform? Uh, and and uh, Vamsi, you're absolutely correct. I, I do think, though, with uh, Intel's release of the Broadwell processor, and our, uh, with, uh, Intel ha essentially has a new processor called Broadwell. The Broadwell architecture allows for uh, more memory 
per CPU socket on HANA hardware. That Broadwell processor has only been available for three to six months, I believe. Uh, you're going to see hardware costs come down. We do have lots of uh, lots of customers running uh, two appliance environments where they have all non-prod on one appliance with failover capability and then all production on another. So I think with technical innovation from Intel and a lot of our hardware partners, uh, HANA infrastructure costs are coming down. Um, in terms of, David, you had a question about where would you, could you please send me the link where I can find the AWS Azure instances. Uh, just to, to highlight that again for everybody, it is uh, cal.sap.com. Uh, this is the SAP Cloud Appliance Library. Okay. Perfect. Uh, let's see. So uh, let's see. I think that is uh, after migrating to S4 HANA. Is it does it require to run SWPM? Uh, the the answer is no. Deepak, the only way to migrate to S4 HANA is to use the software update manager with database migration option. Now, with that said, I know that everybody has a day job. Uh, we all got, got to have to get back to uh, meetings and, and planning our S4 migrations instead of attending webinars. For those of you who have questions, my email is posted here. Please reach out to me. Reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, as always, thank you for attending our webinars. Have a wonderful afternoon, and I will see you at the next SAP conference.